Hi, I'm Kirsty. And I'm Josh. This week we're going to be talking to you about cloning. This is a technique that's been around as long as they've been making films, and you may have seen it in such films as... The Parent Trap with Lindsay Lohan. Double Impact with Jean-Claude Van Damme. Don't even think about it. <laughs> or, a favourite of mine, Star Trek The Undiscovered Country with Bill Shatner. I can't believe I kissed you. Must have been your lifelong ambition. Now this is a pretty easy effect and we're going to be showing you how to do it at home. Let's do this. So what is a clone shot? Well, the simplest way of looking at it is filming yourself on one side of the shot and then filming yourself on the other side of the shot, cutting both of them in half and sticking them together to make it look like you were there twice. There's a few things you're going to need to consider when doing a cloning shot. The first thing is a locked off camera. The tripod is in a fixed, stable position and the camera doesn't move for any of your shots. The thing you're going to want to pay attention to the most is the light. You're going to want to make sure that that doesn't change. Here we have an issue in that we've got natural light coming in through the blinds, so while we're filming an episode, the light changes and we can't control that. The way we're going to try and address this in our cloning shots is we're going to try and shoot them very quickly so that the light doesn't change. Plus, we didn't really want to be doing this at 3 a.m. This kind of shot's really hard to do outside because literally everything is moving. You think about the clouds, the trees, maybe water or traffic going past. Moulding two shots together, which is what cloning is, where the backgrounds are going to be subtly different or very different, just isn't going to work. So if you're shooting outside, make sure nothing is moving. As you just saw, the thing you're going to need to watch out for here is overlap. You don't want any overlap of shadows or physical interaction like an arm over an arm because that's going to make it really difficult in post. You've got to look at the details. If you've got two people sitting next to each other on the sofa, well maybe actually the scene down the middle is going to be quite awkward because the cushions might rest slightly differently. So watch out for that kind of thing. So if you're interacting verbally, you're going to need to have somebody standing in saying your lines so that you have someone to naturally react to. If you don't have a stand-in, what's best is to actually record your first clone clip and then maybe play it back on a laptop so you can hear what you're saying and then react to it naturally. Like I said before, you're going to need to watch out for shadows. So when you're setting up your lighting, you want to make sure that the shadows aren't intersecting. Just in case you gesticulate wildly while you're talking, like Josh does. Anytime there's physical interaction of any kind, like punching people or passing things between each other, there's going to require some masking. The slower the movement is, the more likely the audience are going to be able to notice that there's something wrong. So watch out for that. Therefore, the quicker the action and the more fluid the motion, the more you're going to disguise in your cloning shot. If it's a punch, which is just two or three frames of you interacting, then it's going to be much easier for you to work on those to a really high level and make it look perfect. If it's two or three hundred frames, well, nobody likes rotoscoping. So here's how you create a clone shot inside HitFilm. First, we're going to import some footage. This footage has both sides of the clone shot, so the right-hand side of me happy and the left-hand side of me sad. Next, I'm going to click on that footage and select Make Composite Shot. This is automatically going to fill in all the awkward details for me, so I can just name the shot what I want, like Clone Shot, and I'm good to go. Now I'm going to delete this shot and actually add in my separate layers. So first thing, I'm going to select the happy clone, which is the one on the right, set my in and out points, and then just drag it on. That's my first layer. I will call that happy clone. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to select the left-hand clone. So this is me looking sad. Set the in and the out points. Drag that on above the other layer. Now, of course, this will obscure the other layer. I'll call it sad clone. And then we can go into the transparency settings to see how things are lined up. As you can see, there's a nice good gap between the two clones. But what we want to be able to do is see both, and for that we'll use a mask. So if I mask around this clone, it will get rid of everything on the layer that isn't under the mask. But unfortunately, it also creates a very hard edge. To go around this issue, we can go into the mask, shape, and then increase the feather. And that will create a nice smooth transition between the two layers. And there you have it. Your clone shot's finished. So now you know how to clone. Congratulations. We want to know what your favourite cloning film is. So do let us know in the comments down below. Please remember to subscribe. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye. Josh, tell me a secret about yourself. I hate you.